Hello everyone, today we are looking at one of these. Uh, now this might not look like much, um, this is in fact uh, a Tandy phone. Um, if you guys don't know what Tandy is, Tandy is um, uh, an old make um, of electronics. Uh, they had shops all over uh, the joint, uh, they had some in the UK as well actually. Um, I'm not sure it still exists in the US. Um, it could do um, because I'm not too sure which is which Radio Shack and Tandy uh, I know Radio Shack def definitely disappeared off the market in the UK um, and I think we even had Tandy at some point as well uh, but uh, it, this looks like they had their own phone. Um, I, um, if you're regular to the channel, you, you guys know I don't do things by halves. And um, this one is pretty beat up. Um, and um, I happen to have at least two of these. Um, so I'm not going to show you this one, even though this is in a, um, a really crappy leather case as such. Uh, this isn't even real leather. This is all fake. Um, but um, I'm going to show you one that's in slightly better condition. This one I've got on charge. Um, it is charging and let me just get rid of that. Um, and it's actually finished charging. Um, and this one is in, in remarkably better better shape than the one in the leather case, which makes no sense at all. But um, these phones were around, um, I would say, probably 92, 93. These are all analog, although you do get um, some like the, the Nokia 2010, which is a similar sort of um, family of phones. Um, this one is loosely based on that in terms of size, um, but the battery is different. Um, this is more akin to, uh, I think, the Nokia 101, which I also have somewhere, uh, which I'll try and do a video about as well. Um, but the, the Nokia 101 was, was a basic analog phone, um, not the 101 one, which was the very first digital phone, or one of Nokia's first digital phones. Uh, the 101 was analog, and, and this is based on the 101, uh, which you guys might see if you do a search, because those things were uh, everywhere at the time. Um, so let me quickly take the battery off. I'll take the charger off for now. Um, and if you're wondering what kind of charger this uses, it's the AC4X. Um, but the 12 volt version, because uh, there's two versions of that charger, uh, battery comes undone, undone like so. Uh, this is a Tandy battery as well. I don't know what the uh, the the Nokia equivalent would be. Nickel cadmium, of course, um, as you can tell. Um, and this would be the back of the phone. Uh, this is a, a CT350. If you guys are wondering, uh, this is out of America because uh, this operated on um, I think amps. Um, I don't think these operated on CDMA or TDMA. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do think this is AMPS, um, just because of the age of the phone. Um, so, it's got the old um, pull-out antenna, which is always neat in, uh, in, in the old school phones. Um, and this is metal, um, unlike um, a lot of the Motorola phones, which just have a flimsy bit of plastic. This actually does have a, a metal, it's just quite stiff, and this has a coil in it. Uh, and to show you what I mean, Here's one I made earlier, in terms of here's one I broke earlier, um, digging this out the box. This unfortunately came undone. I mean, the rubber was gone anyway, but um, it went a bit round. So we got a, a 90 degree antenna, and this is the coil. I don't know if you guys can see that. Will it zoom? It'll zoom right in, hopefully, yeah. So this is uh, the coil of the, the antenna. Try and get a real good zoom on that. Will it zoom? There we go. So that's the antenna and obviously that would sit in in the plastic housing um so and, and a lot of uh, the, the 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 antennas um in fact even the the mr601 which is one of the few microtax that has metal in the antenna um has a coil at the very top um i should really dig that out in fact let me get my own one so this is my own personal um Motorola MR601. Um, it, like I said, if, you, if you're a regular to the channel, I share with this phone. I use this every single day, um, which is why it's kind of um, beat up. Well, it's not beat up, but it, it is got a lot of scratches and a lot of scrapes, and it's lost that nice um, sand sandpaper feel that you have on, on newer phones. This is all smooth, and it's been rubbed down because I've been sliding it in and out of this case. Um, and in fact, it's got another SIM card in there as well. So, but. Um, to show you guys what I mean, this has exactly the same symptoms. After a while, the plastic just dies away, um, partly because 
the the antenna has been bent a little like so and um, unfortunately the, the rubber just gives way and eventually the, the coil gets exposed. It doesn't really affect the reception at all. Service is real good on these. Um, and uh, if, you got, if you guys watched the, um, the video last week, was it last week or the week before? Uh, no, I think it was last week when I came back from Malaysia. This thing I had out in Malaysia, I had it out in the, in the Far East and in Thailand, uh, uh, a few other places as well. So um, this goes everywhere with me. I carry this daily. Um, slap this on the belt clip. But anyway, so um, these phones are, are, are real good because the, they were built to last. Um, and I think um, given this has stood the test of time, um, it is pretty neat to sort of see one of these powered up, so I'm just going to do that. Um, in fact, I did charge this, and it does take a, a little bit of a charge, he says. But it's not going to power on now. Great. Okay, well, we'll just plug the charger back in. I did have this charging, so... Um, there we go. So that was the original number. Um, I bought this off a guy in the States who obviously didn't want it anymore. Um, I think it was in North Carolina, somewhere like that. So, um, But this is uh, one of the very early, uh, one of the few phones, I should say, um, um, analog phones that um, actually is driven with a, with a menu. Um, a lot of the older phones, the, the analog phones, uh, didn't, didn't have a, a, a menu where you could change the options of the phone. It was just function and then a number and that would either be on or off and you'd just get confirmation on the screen. Um, this phone actually had its dedicated menu button uh, and uh, an up and down or left and right scroll buttons uh, and you selected it by pressing store. So um, real neat feature this. So let's go into the menu, check it out. So it says obviously, I'm going to try and get this to focus. Hopefully it will. So you guys got, you guys got menu. So you press menu and then you go left or right. So you got lock phone. I ain't gonna press that because I don't know the code to this. System select, last uh, recall last, uh, call timers, lights are on or off, keypad tones, ringing volume, NAM select, send DTMF and lock phone. If you guys don't know what NAM is, on uh, on a lot of the older um, phones. Um, you could have more than one number. Uh, you could have subscription to to more than one provider at the same time, and depending on which area you, you know had the best service from whichever provider, you could switch between the two. Um, it, it's common in a lot of Motorola phones, uh, a lot of the earlier sort of amps phones, um, the MicroTaki Lite or Elite. Um, a, a lot of, in fact, in fact, I need to do a video about that one. But um, a lot of the older MicroTaks, um, you know, the the, the the sort of of the era, of sort of mid to well, early early to mid 90s, um, they had they all had that feature. So and obviously, if you go up to the, the Digital Elite, which you could swap between amps and um, and CDMA, obviously, you had that function as well. But anyway, um, so you got menu, and then recall. I'm not too sure what that is, but let's try. So would that be the last number? Or not even sure. Okay, well, clear that up. Um, menu, back to the menu. So lock phone, system select, what do we get when we press that? Store, not home type A, so this would be equivalent to scan A on the Motorola's, um, and then home area, both systems, or scan B or type B, I suppose. Uh, non home, so you would select whichever one you wanted, uh, your home network or just both systems. So, uh, and that would select it. So pretty basic, but it worked at the time. What else we got? Uh, recall last, call timers. So the last call was only six seconds. Um, three hours, 19 minutes and 44 seconds. This thing's gotta stop zooming in and out. Um, I'm not too sure what OPT is actually. Um, reset timers, can we do that? Lock code, no I don't have that, so I guess not. Uh, menu. What else we got? Lights on or off, that kind of speaks for itself. The, the backlit of the display and keypad. Uh, keypad tones, always a good one. Keypad tones on, keypad tones off. So that would be the beep that you hear. Um, so let's go back. Um, ringing volume. How many options? High, low, silent service. And that was it. 
you had low, high, or just silent. Um, and there ain't nowhere you can actually change the, the ringing tone on this either. You had one ringtone, people, that was it. No fancy ringtones, no polyphonic ringtones, no Mr. Dr. Dre in your ringtone, or none of that nonsense that uh, you, you guys you guys listen to. I know a lot of teenagers now have you know funky ringtones with rappers and or techno thumping music or none of that stuff. Back in those days, it was just literally a noise. Um, and in fact, let me try and see if I can get this to ring by changing the volume. Um, not sure that's possible actually, but we'll try it anyway. Um, would you... I'm not too sure if... No, it won't let me do it. That's a shame. Okay, well... Clear. So that would be your earpiece volume when you're in a car, but I don't think you can actually make the ringing tone. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. Um, and that's about it, really. Send DTMF. That was also an option. Um, I'm not too sure what for. Maybe if you had a, a number dial and you press that, it would send the DTMF. I'm not really sure. Um, and I don't have a manual for this. So, and that was it. You had eight menu options. Zero. One, two, three, four, zoom, five, six, seven, eight, so well, nine, including zero. Um, pretty neat, um, but real basic, uh, real basic at the time, got the Tandy logo on the bottom, um, and um, I guess it worked for people at the time, because this was a, you know, a luxury, by today's standards, this is a, well, this is a, a, what you'd probably used to, some, to hit someone on the head with because you can't really do much with these phones now they're analog um, and uh, good for paperweights or doorstops um, and not much else in fact no I think you could probably use them as a toy for your dog um, if you want to play fetch you could throw this and the dog might might get bored of the buttons eventually but yeah <laughs> there, there really isn't much use uh, for, for these anymore um, except obviously if you got a test network but I mean, who has one of those nowadays? Even I don't have one of them. It is on my list of things to do, but I just had the time yet. So um, that's all I'll say about this one and this one here. Um, in fact, let me quickly undo the zipper to show you guys this one's in not great a shape. I actually took the battery off this one because it was really corroding um, and um, it was uh, damaging the, uh, the contacts on the battery. These ones aren't too bad because I sandpapered them when I first took the battery off, but uh, it is the same phone. Um, just not in that great a shape so um, including the antenna obviously so but um, yeah if you uh, like the front of the video give me a thumbs up as always if you haven't subscribed hit that subscribe button um, and I'll see you guys next week thanks for watching